morning and welcome to the Lake District. If you're new around here, hi, I'm Caroline and I'm coming towards the end of my week here with my other half, Andy. Yesterday we hiked all the way up to Scarfell Pike, the highest peak in England. And so today we're having what we like to class as being a rest day. Today we're gonna to drive over towards Buttermere. We then will be going on to Ranadale Knots to do a hike, but it is just about 350-ish meters high. It's not overly strenuous. There's a waterfall on the other side of Crummock Water, which we might go and have a look at. And then potentially we'll go for a dip in the lake. We've got our swimmers, but we'll just kind of see how today goes. Moss Force waterfall measures 100 metres in height and gives amazing views back out over the valley that we've had to drive up. There's also a one and a half mile trail up to Robinson from this point and obviously it would be another one and a half miles back to where the cars can get parked up. We've parked up in a free lay-by that's at the Buttermere end of Crummock Water and we're deciding to hike up Ranadale Knots going up the very steep but short section first and then what that means is that when we descend <clears throat> we've got a much more gentle downward slope which is just a little bit nicer on our knees. I wasn't actually expecting to get any freebie parking today because we had a very very late start. It's gone 10 o'clock but yesterday when we were hiking at Scarfell Pike there was a gentleman who was saying that he feels like the lakes are so much quieter this year and he seems to think that with the cost of living crisis and the extortionate price of fuel a lot of people have just said that they can't afford to come away on holiday this year and that might be the sad reality as to why we have been able to get parked without having to go for a paid for car park. Whilst the 355 meter elevation walk might not sound overly impressive when we were doing just shy of a thousand meters yesterday, I have to say I do actually really quite enjoy our rest days just because it gives such a different environment that you get to walk through. Today it's so much more green and there's like a lot of ferns, there's a lot of these spiky things that I've still not learned the name of and they've got yellow flowers coming off of some of them and usually some are like blooming with yellow flowers and others have got none on them and then there's the purple flowers that aren't heather it's something else there's like a tiny bit of heather and I think just being like much lower down and being able to see the lakes because we really couldn't see that many lakes until we were right up at the very top of Scarfell Pike yesterday and it just gives it a really varied feel to the trip and the holiday that we're doing. Oh, a hike like this, I always say it's quite good because it doesn't mess around right at the start, super steep. You get in all of these really amazing views whilst you've still got plenty of energy. And this I feel like is giving us some of the best views since the very first day. And the very first day we were at a completely different part of the park. We did Orist Head down by Windermere. And out here you can see the wind farm out at sea and then Scotland on the other side. Ranadale knots 355 meters, which might not sound like too much of an achievement, but given the way my legs are feeling, I feel like this is an achievement.
Well, this has been one corker of a walk. The views that you get for the little amount of effort is absolutely stunning. And what I really like is that a few days ago, we came to this area and we were actually on the other side of Buttermere Lake where we hiked up to Red Pike and then we did the most epic day hike across the High Style and High Crag, dropped down and then back up to the Buttermere Haystacks and then down to Buttermere Lake itself. And it's just really cool getting to stand here going, whoa, we did all of that because from this height in this location, that really does look like quite a challenging hike and might also help to explain why our legs are feeling the way they are because I don't think it's just Scarfell Pike on its own that's done this to us. Unlike the path that we took up going back down in the direction of Buttermere, there's a slight scrambly section that we're right at the top of. And then what I really like is on a clear day like today when you can just see the path and you can see exactly where you need to go and it looks lovely and gentle down. The sun and how it's just shining down into the green pastures and onto Buttermere is stunning. This is the direction that we're actually walking in, so this is just what we're looking out onto at the moment. If you also come walking in the fells, I'm hoping that you're gonna know what I'm talking about here, but pretty much 90% of the way down from the top has been walking on these beautiful grassy paths. When you've been walking on rocks and stones for the last few days, this is blissful. It's like walking on a cloud. I think one of the really amazing things about the Lake District is that you don't actually have to go up a huge peak of a mountain in order to be able to get stunning views. We've come down to the shore of Buttermere Lake. We're just having surprise, surprise ham and egg sandwich. When we were here a few days ago, we talked about how we've been tipped off that they were doing some filming around here, we think for the Mission Impossible film. But by the time that we'd got here, everything was all packed away and it looked like they were done with the filming. But right at the very end of the day, I was almost certain that I'd overheard someone talking about a recce and like a plane and a stunt person and so I was wondering if they were potentially going to come back and do some more filming and we can just see at the other end of the lake a few white marquees that have been popped up so I actually think that, that film crew might be back. I wonder though if Tom Cruise is around or not. our lunch spot alongside Buttermere. We're now walking in the direction of Scale Force Waterfall. I think we must have passed about 50 streams that are all coming down off of this mountain range into Crummock Water. Some of them have been big enough that we've had to go over wooden footbridges, whereas others it's just been a case of walking through very shallow water. And then some of them, they've had to put proper stepping stones in them. Some have been trickier to cross than others. Andy seems to just be getting on with it in his stride. Oh, it's the perks of being tall. To get to Buttermere Lake we walked through the village and it was incredibly busy. There was even a sign out saying that the car park was full. The lake was very busy where we were sat having our lunch and also just seeing people walking around it. And yet as soon as we've come away from Buttermere and we've got to Crummock Water, it's blissfully quiet. And because of that it just means that the wildlife is really erupting around here. We've seen so many dragonflies, there was one heron as well. The 
further along this trail that we are going, the more and more wild that it's becoming. We are having to climb a little bit of elevation. I'd seen on the OS map that there were definitely contours, but I thought they were a lot more spaced out than this. Jesus, my audio is terrible. But right now, we are in that midsection. So behind me is the lower drop. And right in front of me is the much skinnier and much taller drop. But we watched this gentleman come down off of the rocks and he was like, you've got to get yourselves up there. Once you get up to the bottom of that top drop, it just opens out. And it's so true. The amount of moss and ferns, and then you've got little drop pools it's just got a completely different feel to the very bottom part of the waterfall. If you are able to scramble up those rocks, it's definitely worth it. You can see the Randadale knots that we walked this morning. And if you come down that very sharp drop where it meets the road, that's where the car's parked. Obviously we can't just walk straight to it because there's a massive lake in the way. So we have got quite the walk back, although I'm hoping that to start off with it will be downhill and then it should be flat the rest of the way. sooner have the woods opened out into the lake shore and Andy is just once again in his photographing element. He's saying that the light at this time of the day is really nice and apparently the light within this wood as well is really good because you've got like the darkness of the tree trunks and then you've got the backlight coming through the grasses is what he's been explaining. Don't get me wrong it is gorgeous. All the way up Ranadale Knots this morning, every now and again, I could just hear the honking of geese out on this lake. Now that we've got down to the lake shore, a couple of geese were just sat up on the side and one of them sort of stuck up its head as if to be like, oh wait, people are coming. And then they waddled off into the lake. So it's kind of cool getting to see what was making all of that racket this morning. Much like Buttermere Lake, we keep on seeing all of these signs saying no camping. And we've just come across one that lets you know where the nearest campsite is. Now we've spent pretty much all of today around this area. And then three days ago, when we did the big epic ridgeline walk across to the haystacks, it was another full day. And we've had that vantage point from so high up, we've had the vantage point of actually being down here on the ground. And it wasn't until this evening when we actually spotted that campsite that's here, situated in between Buttermere and Cremock Water. So it's really, really well hidden. And yet it's got beautiful, almost direct access to each of these lakes. So it turns out that the lakeshore path only went a certain way. So we've decided to come up onto this very fern lined path to take us back to the car. We've come across these sheep. Now last summer when we hiked up Helm Crag, you could just see the 
burns moving and I was saying if I didn't know any better and I hadn't grown up in the UK I'd be really freaked out because it was very Jurassic Park-esque but obviously I knew that it was the sheep I just assumed that once they saw us coming up the path instead of just wandering further up the path that they too would have gone through the ferns one way or the, the other but no they're just going and every now and again they stop and then they turn around and they're like ah you're still following us okay and we just seem to be pushing them on and if we stop they stop I feel a bit mean I'm not trying to bully them but we don't really have another option <laughs> Bye-bye, sheepsies. <laughs>